never changes. The Romans waged war to gather slaves and wealth. Spain built an empire from its lust for gold and territory. Hitler shaped a battered Germany into an economic superpower. But war never changes. In the 21st century, war was still waged over the resources that could be acquired. Only this time, the spoils of war were also its weapons. Petroleum and uranium. For these resources, China would invade Alaska, the US would annex Canada, and the European Commonwealth would dissolve into quarreling, bickering nation states bent on controlling the last remaining resources on Earth. In 2077, the storm of world war had come again. In two brief hours, most of the planet was reduced to cinders. And from the ashes of nuclear devastation, a new civilization would struggle to arise. A few were able to reach the relative safety of the large underground vaults. Your family was part of that group that entered Vault 13. Imprisoned safely behind the large vault door under a mountain of stone, a generation has lived without knowledge of the outside world. Life in the vault is about to change. Ha! Ah, you're here. Good. We've got a problem. A big one. The controller chip for our water purification system has given up the ghost. Can't make another one, and the process is too complicated for a workaround system. Simply put, we're running out of drinking water. No water, no vault. This is crucial to our survival. And frankly, I, I think you're the only hope we have. You need to go find us another controller chip. We estimate we have four to five months before the vault runs out of water. We need that chip. We marked your map with the location of another vault. Not a bad place to start, I think. Look, just be safe, okay? I'm Max Stone, and for 23 years, I have lived in Vault 13, an underground haven that saved my ancestors from nuclear annihilation on October 23rd, 2077. For 84 years, it has kept us safe. That was until the water chip broke. The overseer, the leader of the vault, then gathered up those of us healthy enough to venture out into the wastes and had us draw straws. I drew the shortest straw and was sent out into the nuclear hellscape to find a replacement chip. Upon my exit of the vault, I immediately found a skeleton, and when I checked to see if it had anything worthwhile on it, I found the knife and some 10 millimeter armor penetrating rounds. I then grabbed my 10 millimeter pistol, made sure I had a magazine loaded, and started my journey to Vault 15. As I looked around the cave, all I saw was a bunch of rats, and thought, why not, I need some target practice before I start my journey. In an area to my left, I found eight rats. Further up the cave to my right, I found 12 more rats. After killing all 20 rats, I made my way out of the cave and towards Vault 15. As I made my way towards Vault 15, I stopped in the, in the town of Shady Sands. As I made my way towards the entrance, I was stopped by a man named Seth, who asked, How can I help you? I'd like some information, Seth then asked. What would you like to know about? I took a second to think and said, I'd like to know about this place. Seth then proceeded to explain how Shady Sands is a peaceful place that farms their own food using an irrigation system. However, they are plagued by raiders 
and things called rad scorpions. Whatever they are. What are rad scorpions? Seth then said, Well, the rad scorpions have always been a problem. Not a week goes by without a Brahmin getting poisoned. Last week, I lost my brother to them. What can you tell me about the raiders? There are several groups of raiders. I organize guards like Ian to help fight them off. There is one band to the southeast of here. Watch out for them now. All right. Thanks for the info, Seth. As the conversation ended, he told me I should go see Aradesh, their leader, who was in the town hall building to the south. I then proceeded to make my way around town, and as I walked into a building to the west, I saw an interestingly dressed man. I walked to the room he was in, got distracted by a bookshelf, which had a hundred rounds of 223 jacketed hollow point rounds and 20 BBs. I then walked over to the man and said hello. As I said hello, he replied, Hmm. <laughs> you look new. What's your name? I'm Max Stone. Good to meet you. Name's Ian. What do you do here? I'm a guard for some merchants at a place called The Hub. But I got shot by some bandits, and I had to stay here to recover. And I'm helping the people around here with some of my skills. Could you help me out a bit? I could really use your help. Well, this place has gotten boring. I'll be out for the standard rate. That'll be a hundred caps. How about a piece of the action instead? That'll work. As long as I get a share of the loot. We then made our way off to a building to our three o'clock and checked the bookshelf in there, which had a scouting book. I read the book and it gave me some new helpful tips on how to survive this hellish landscape. After reading the book, we made our way to a building to our six o'clock, where we met the town doctor, a man by the name of Roslo. Can I help you with anything? Not right now. But it was nice to meet you, Roslo. Before meeting with Aradesh, we checked the bookshelf and found a knife, five rocks, and a stem pack. Then made our way to Aradesh. Greetings. Your business in Shady Sands might be... I'm from a vault to the west. My people are dying of thirst, and I need to find a water purifier chip for them to survive. Wanderer, I shall believe you. For now, you may enter Shady Sands, but be warned, your every move will be watched. I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions. Certainly. What do you wish to know? What can you tell me about the other towns around here? Junktown lies south of here, though there is little in the way of visitation. From stories, I'm certain there are cities south of that. Thanks. Uh, I... Actually, can I ask you a few more questions? Certainly. What do you wish to know? What's going on around here? Oh my, yes. Great packs of rad scorpions are killing our herds. We don't know where they're from, and no matter how many we kill, there's always more. And now the monsters are attacking my people. Roslo is trying to find a cure for their poison, but I'm not sure how it goes. Well, I'll help you get rid of those things. Mm, yes, 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 yes. Please, talk to Roslo. He possesses far more information on these creatures than I. Thank you, Aradesh. I'll go talk with Roslo right now. We made our way over to Roslo's hut, and as we entered the door, we saw Roslo standing a few feet away, and he greeted us. How can I help you? What do you know about rad scorpions? Not too much. They seem to be extremely large versions of the North American Emperor Scorpion. Contrary to my medical knowledge, their poison has grown more potent, not diluted, as I would expect. Seth has been hunting them, which has helped tremendously in my experiments. And how such a large creature can even be possible by natural evolution, or even radiation mutation, is beyond me. Anything else? They seem to be sensitive to light, nocturnal. 
If I could get a sample of their poison, especially the venom production sac located in their tail, I could create an anti-venom. Thanks, Roslo. After finishing our conversation with Roslo, we make our way over to Seth at the front gate so he can show us the rat scorpion cave. As I walk towards Seth, he asks, Can I help you with anything? Could you take me to the rat scorpion caves? Are you ready? I can't leave my posts, but I will give you all the directions. I look back at Ian to make sure he's ready, and he nods back at me. We're ready, Seth. After a short trek through the desert, we end up finding the cave that Seth directed us to. As we enter the cave, we see a picked clean skeleton of a Brahmin marking the entrance. As I turn to the right to look down in a tunnel in the, in the cave, I see two rad scorpions, both the size of a pony, scuttling about. And further in the cave, I can hear the faint sounds of other creatures walking about. As a rad scorpion approaches, I take out my 10 millimeter pistol and shoot at it, missing it by a few inches. Ian then takes aim and shoots twice, one hitting the rat scorpion in the abdomen, and the other shot hits the rat scorpion in the head, visibly injuring it. Ian then shoots again, killing the rat scorpion. I walk over to the now dead rat scorpion and cut off its tail. I put the tail in my bag, covering part of my bag with the scorpion's blue blood. We then battle our way through the cave, making sure to kill every rat scorpion we come by. When we made it back to Shady Sands, we immediately went to Roslo. All right, you're back. Can I help you? I have a sample of the red scorpion poison. Can you do something with it? Let me see the sack. Yes, I can do something with this. Here, take this as a free sample. It seems to work well against rat scorpion stings, of course, but it shows much potential as a general anti-venom and poison cure. After giving the rat scorpion tail to Roslo, we then continued our journey to Vault 15. During our trek to Vault 15, we pass by a merchant and his guards on their way to Shady Sands. Do you go to Shady Sands often? It's part of my normal trade route. You can travel with us if you want. No thanks, I got something else to do right now. What do you have for sale? I trade the BBs, a knife, two rocks, and six caps for some 10 millimeter jacketed hollow point rounds. We then continue towards Vault 15. As we approached the location Overseer Jacori and told us about, the only thing in sight is a run-down shack. As we walk into the shack, the only thing we see is a manhole. We open the manhole and climb down the ladder. As I step off the ladder, I notice that something has caused the vault door to be blown clean off its hinges and allowed rats and mole rats to infest the vault. We fight through the rats before entering the vault. But as we enter the vault, a lesser mole rat turns the corner and charges at me. I take out my pistol and fire a shot 
causing the mole rat to be dazed. Ian then fires a shot at the mole rat, hitting it in the underbelly. I then fire one more shot, killing the lesser mole rat. Ian and I then clear out the entrance area of the vault. As we approached the doorway to the elevator, we noticed that the elevator cable had snapped at some point in the past. Luckily, I picked up a rope back at Shady Sands, so I tied the rope to a pole at the top of the elevator shaft and we climbed our way down. On the second level, there were more rats and lesser mole rats. Ian and I quickly dispatched them and looked around to see if we could find some more rope so we could reach the next level down. In a locker in the third room, we found a rope and some leather armor. In a partially collapsed hallway, I found some 10 millimeter ammo. We made our way down to the next level and fought against various mole rats and rats. In the locker, we found a 10 millimeter SMG. We searched every single nook and cranny of that dilapidated vault and nothing but broken technology, mutated animals, and the scars of a community torn apart by ideological differences remained. With 140 days remaining to find the water chip, we now head to a place called Junktown to find a lead on where a water chip might be. And at this point of the journey, the only thing I'm sure about anymore is that this journey has only just begun. Hey everybody, thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and to ring the bell to know when I'm live.